Okay, welcome to part four of lecture one of fluff body aerodynamics. So now let's talk about the law of conservation of mass, also known as the continuity equation. Generally in this course we're going to be concerned or interested in steady flow, so there can be no accumulation or depletion of mass, and we're considering incompressible flows where the fluid has a constant density. So you may have sort of thought that these two things were the same thing before, but incompressible flow means that the density does not change based on how quickly the fluid is moving. And constant density flow means that all of the incoming flow has the same density. Right? It's possible to have incompressible variable density flow if there's sort of an initial density gradient in the fluid. So before I get into talking about conservation of mass specifically, I want to introduce my approach to talking about physical phenomena. In this course, I'm going to avoid as much as I can getting bogged down in mathematics. Occasionally, some math is necessary, though. But wherever possible, we're going to use our physical intuition to kind of devise uh, or deduce physical laws. So let's start with the law of mass conservation. Let's consider an arbitrary volume. Since the flow is incompressible, Conservation of mass means conservation of volume. So let's consider some volume of space, and then in a steady flow uh, with incompressible conditions, um, conservation of mass means that whatever is going into this volume at any instant in time must equal what's going out of the volume at that same instant in time. So here's this little box uh, wh which has some flow going in and out. So we see flow going in on the left side, the top, bottom, and then flow leaving on the right. Um, and we're going to assume that on each side of the box, the, the velocity is a constant. So what we just did was introduce the idea of a control volume. This is an idea, not a real thing. The control volume is a fixed volume in space. In general, it could also be deforming with time, but we're not going to consider that in this course. Uh, and because flowing fluids are typically of interest, control volumes are very useful for analysis because they help us track flows in and out of a given space. So let's try to develop the mass conservation equation for an example case. So let's assume that the velocities uh, v are as shown, so three uh, big V coming in on the left, V coming in from the top, V going into the bottom, and the, and the box is 2L long and 1L high. The fluid density is some constant rho, and we'll consider this just a 2D control volume, so it's really a control area, but we'll just assume it has, say, unit depth into the page. So let's work through writing down the equation for mass conservation for this, for this volume and find the velocity for the right side. So, let's just redraw the problem. So this is length 2L, this is length L, here we have 3V, V, V, and then the question is this is V right, and what is it, right? So let's look at conservation of mass. Conservation of mass, in words we said that um, Essentially, the sum of everything going in must be the sum of everything going out. So the sum of all mass flows, which we usually denote m dot, equals zero. We have to adopt a sign convention. Let's take the convention in is positive. So flows going in will be positive. Okay. We could do it the other way around. It's just a convention, but we just have to be explicit in what we're going to do. So then. Let's call it, this is the left side, top, bottom, right. Um, so let's go to the left. What's our mass flow? M dot left. Rho L 3V. What's the top? 
m dot top row 2l v In the bottom m dot bottom row 2l v again and then our mass conservation equation here this says m dot left plus m dot right plus m dot top plus m dot bottom is zero so we basically need to add all these up and we could write m dot right in terms of the thing we care about m dot right is rho l v right so let's put all of it together right so we've got rho l i'll just put the numerical coefficients out front three rho l v plus two rho l v plus two rho l v plus rho l v right equals zero this is from the left top bottom and right so the rows all cancel and the l's all cancel and what we get is 7v plus v right equals 0. So v right is minus 7v, which means it's 7v out. And that's exactly what we see here. I've summarized this in the slide. So the right side velocity is 7v outwards. Now if we take our volume size and we shrink it down to zero, this will yield a differential form of our conservation law. So the divergence of the velocity has to essentially be zero is what we get for the differential form of mass conservation and incompressible flow. So grad dot v equals zero. What this means, right, this grad operator is ddx in the x direction, ddy in the y direction, ddz in the k direction, which have unit vectors i, j, k. And that's dotted with the velocity vector vx in the x direction, vy in the y direction, vz in the z direction. So we get dvx dx plus dvy dy plus dvz dz must equal zero. So that's the expression for conservation of mass. Now, if we take the differential form and we integrate it over a volume, we can get the integral form. And this is sort of formally. Uh, how we get the equation that we intuitively devised to, to solve our problem earlier. There's a detailed derivation in section 2.1.8.2 of the text if you're interested, um, but the result is essentially that the integral over the surface of the control volume of the velocity, uh, the, the product of the dot, the, velo the dot product of the velocity and the surface normal um, is zero, or the, the surface area uh, with with a, with a normal direction, with an outward facing normal, is zero. So the sum of all mass flows over the surface of the control volume must be zero, is what this says. Okay, so that's the end of part four.